Hello and welcome everybody to this concise webinar. My name is Richard Keyes. This session is how to reduce shopping cart abandonment. And I'd also like to welcome Gareth Lane. Gareth, say hello. Gareth Lane reporting for duty. <laughs> very good, very good. Thanks everybody for turning up. Um, this is, as I say, one of our concise webinars. For those people who haven't been to one of these, these are, we try to keep them concise. We try to keep them 100% educational. We focus on stuff you can use. And these are not sales pitches, but we do want to share useful information with you. As I mentioned, uh, uh, my name is Richard, and uh, uh, I'm a director of Concise Digital, as is Gareth, uh, director of Concise Digital. Okay, let's rip into the topic of today, how to reduce shopping cart abandonment. So the first thing is to understand why it is that online shoppers abandon their carts why is it what this does not happen in supermarkets very often although it's quite fun when you kind of put it to the test and you go around and collect a whole lot of things from the shelves and then just leave the trolley in the middle of the supermarket it or ikea happen. <laughs> or ikea that can happen but in um, in online environment why does it happen because it can and it can happen very very easily but we've got some information some some stats about that one of the organizations we turn to for information reliable information on um uh, e-commerce and various other things is a, a bunch of guys in the uh, in Copenhagen uh, called the Baymart Institute. I've known them for well, quite a long time now, and I, we used to run some webinars together. Um, they ran a survey. They uh, they do this uh, every now and again. But they ran their most recent survey last year of 4,328 shoppers in the U.S. and said, if if you abandoned a shopping cart in the last three months, why did you abandon? And what they found was that 58% of the people who did abandon the shopping cart were just browsing and were not ready to buy. Now that makes kind of perfect sense. You know, a lot of people just are looking, they're not ready to buy. What that also means on the flip side of it is that roughly 40% may have been ready to buy, but they still abandoned. And so what we're delving into today is why is this and what do you do about it? So. For the 58% of those people who were just browsing or weren't ready to buy, what do you do? Do you let them just come and have a look and then head off, which of course they can if they want. But when the buyer is not ready to buy, what are some of the things you can do? Well, firstly, we would say, understand what that buyer is doing. If they're browsing, are they browsing because they might buy in the future or they're just kind of wasting time surfing around? Very few people do that these days. Most people do a bit of research before they buy things. And so, uh, understand their journey. What is it that they are looking for? What is it that they want now? What is it that they're going to want next? One of the things you can do, certainly with e-commerce sites, is you can, when somebody adds product to a shopping cart, you, that you can, they can either abandon the cart or you can add inf uh, various devices and um, um, calls to action into the shopping cart and the checkout process so that if they're not ready to buy, but they could, they, they may want to save their product somewhere, they can save that as a wish list. Now, if you don't have, if your store is not set up to save your shopping cart as a wish list, then it's easy enough to do, depending on what sort of shopping platform system you're using. Um, another thing to do is to encourage visitors to share their contact details so you can engage with them and build relationships, but you need a good process to follow them up. So don't just think that, oh, they're 58% are coming and they're just heading off again because they're not ready. There are things you can do to try to get them into your ecosystem so you can work with them. What the um, guys at uh, Baymar then did was they excluded those people who weren't ready to buy and looked at the stats of the others. And of the people, the 40% the who were ready to buy potentially and still abandoned, what was the reason they did? And this is what they came up with. This is what they found from, the, from their most recent survey. 48% said that the extra costs, shipping, taxes, other fees were too high. We're going to talk, going to talk through some of, these, some of these points, but just be aware, we've actually just released, in fact, it was just last night uh, as part of the tie-in with this webinar, a new guide from Concise Digital on how to reduce shopping cart abandonment. There's actually 51 points that we've covered in, in what we call the Concise Guide. Um, and uh, it's available now on our, on our website as, a, as, a, as in our learn section, um, in our kind of a blog, but it's a very, it's a, it's a long but concise blog article. 
But we're just going to look through these points and, and cover off some of the tips and some of the reasons people abandon, and more importantly, what you can do about it. So for when shipping costs or extra costs are too high, what can you do about it? Gareth, over to you. Sure. So um, if you can see your um, a bounce rate in your Google Analytics on your shipping page, that's a good point, uh, a good place to find it. Then um, some things that you can do are to be upfront about your shipping costs. So putting banners on the homepage or in the header or just be really clear and obvious about your costs. Um, explain your shipping in more detail. Some people will say, you know, free shipping uh, over $500, but is that international? Is it Australia only? Are there special conditions? You can make it, you can easily make a link from the, the title that says free shipping over $500 to a, to a page which explains the shipping in more detail. Uh, and, and of course, is there any option for you to reduce costs? Uh, a lot of this sort of online um, sign up. Uh, tools are, are quite expensive for shipping. Maybe there are better deals you can do. There's certainly a volume discounts. If the more turnover and the more shipping that you do, then the better the deal you, you'll be able to get. And of course, the cheaper it is for the end consumer, then the more likelihood they are to buy from you. So it's an it's an easy one to um, get your conversion rate back up and yeah. reduce your abandonment. And if possible, one of the things that to, to offer is fixed rate shipping. Uh, if you can say all shipping's ten dollars or all shipping's whatever, uh, it will, and and even free over a certain amount of money, then that gives, it's a very clear proposition for for people who are visiting the site. They they don't have to think very much what's the shipping going to be. They know that it's going to be this price, and that's cemented in their head. And then when they add something to the cart, there are no unnecessary or hidden surprises. So what's the second point? The site twenty four percent of people abandon their cart because the the, the e-commerce store wanted the user to create an account. Any website that is selling to consumers that doesn't allow guest checkout is just silly because this has been known for gosh, many, many years now as one of the main reasons for people to abandon. They don't want to create an account to make a purchase. They just want to be able to make a purchase, even if, and this is just ironical and slash silly thing about it, even if they're giving exactly the same information the process of creating an account is something that they, uh, they don't want to do. They just want to purchase. And so if they want to purchase and they put in their delivery address and they put in all the details, it's the same info that they'd put in if they were creating an account, but they don't want to do that. So don't make them do it. I'll still put the same info in in order to make the purchase. Gareth, you got any comments on that one? Yeah, so the solution is easy to for most e-commerce platforms is to allow a guest checkout. Um, I think the word account puts people off more than anything because you still need, you know, even as a guest, you still need your name, your email, your address, your billing. The only real thing you um, you don't you don't give up is is a is create a password. So uh, I've always found this one a bit of an odd one, but I, I definitely know that the the websites that have a guest checkout. Uh, often perform better than those that don't. So it's it's worth 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 reviewing and worth investigating. And sometimes it's as simple as just changing the um, the flow and the process a bit. You can yeah. always create an account afterwards. Next point was delivery was too slow. So if if people perceive the delivery is too slow, what can we do about that? Well, this is all about how you manage your logistics, and you can set up local warehouses. You can offer express shipping. You can allow people to buy from a stockist near them, somebody who sells your products, who's located near that business, if that's possible. You can offer click and collect so that they can come and get it from you rather than having to wait for delivery. There's lots of options available. And so it's about making these visible and available on the website. Um, some uh, people didn't trust the website with their credit card information. Trust is so, so important. And this is about not just the the, the reality of trust, but it's about the perception of security the per and, and how people perceive the overall site, not just about handling your credit card, but whether they trust you as a business. Some of the things you can do about that is to add information into the site, trust builders, we call them, information that will show your legitimacy, show your ABN, show your opening hours, show your history of your business, your phone number, physical addresses, what we call social proof, including reviews and um, uh, information on things like that. A long, complicated checkout process also gets rid of a lot of a, a lot of shoppers, and they just abandon the process involved in that. We're going to switch over in a minute. To, so Gareth's going to show you some stuff through Google Analytics because that's very, very important. Um, 
I don't, uh, other people abandoned because they couldn't see the, the costs, up, the orders up front. The obvious next one is about the website crashing. When websites crash, people do abandon ship. They absolutely do. Um, if you don't have a returns policy, then that, that is on the side of your customers, then that is a reason that people will leave you very quickly. So make sure that you have a good returns policy and focus in and promote that as much as you can. Happy customers talk about how um, happy customers talk positively about you and customers that are unhappy will will uh, share those stories as well. There are some really good stories about businesses with returns policies where they go over and above uh, what you would expect. And, and they're the ones that get talked about positively. Okay, not enough payment methods. That's pretty easy, add some, add some more payment methods. And of course, the, the other point, the credit card was declined. Well, you can't win them all. You, <laughs> you just, you, uh, you know, you, you're not going to get every sale. One of the other things that happens in, in, in why people abandon their card in the process is they simply got interrupted. They got interrupted in the buying process. It wasn't that they didn't want to buy. They just got interrupted and they didn't follow through and make the purchase. So if they do want to buy from you, sometimes they just need a friendly nudge. And so one of the things we suggest uh, that a lot of e-commerce stores do, but they don't always do it well, is to use abandoned cart messages. So these messages can be by sending out an email, can be by a text message, push notification, remarketing ads. But what we, make, what we, what we know works and what we suggest you do is to make sure that the message is not just a standard stock standard thing, Make it a friendly message, make it well written, and use an automated sequence, a flow of time. So with the, which is, with the first one maybe goes out one hour after the abandonment, and then maybe another one 24 hours after the abandonment. So an automated sequence that can then remind the customer or the, the potential customer that, um, uh, th that they were shopping and that you've kept their cart for them and that they can easily come back in and complete the purchase. Okay, so Gareth, let's let's focus on conversion rates now. That's that's the the other really important thing because if you're looking at abandonment, uh, then a lot of a lot of businesses don't really know what their abandonment rates are, yeah. and uh, uh, and also how to improve them. So um, one of the key things here is understanding Google Analytics, and Gareth's going to give you some examples about that now. Just before we just before we do. The, the current or old system for Google Analytics is Google Analytics 3. Google Analytics 4 is the new, new system that comes, it, it's been around for about 12 months now, but as of the 1st of July, Google is going to stop recording any data in the old Google Analytics 3 and only allow new data to be recorded in Google Analytics 4. So you, you businesses that are smart and you know, on the ball, need to have Google Analytics 4 set up already to start recording info so that you can not only make sure you're recording as of the 1st of July, but that you are getting meaningful reports looking back in time. Okay, Gareth, over to you. Yeah, so this, this, this let's say, is a, is a perfect example of a, a correctly configured Google Analytics 4 for an e-commerce business. Uh, and in this screen, it has the items viewed um, and then the items added to cart and then the items purchased. So you can easy, easily see the products that people looked at, those that they people then added to the cart and then those that they then checked out. So for example, product number one, they had 500 views, but only 20 of them added to the cart. So perhaps there's something on that page or that product, the price is too much or the stock is not available or there wasn't enough information. And then when um, people then added it to the cart, only three of those people actually completed that. So, that, so 17 of those people that said, yeah, I think I want this product didn't, didn't actually complete. So there's, there's two gaps there. There's a, there's a gap in the, the views to the um, added, and then there's a gap in the um, uh, people that didn't complete the checkout. So if you don't have that information, then it's very difficult for you to be able to make improvements and see where your opportunities are. So this is what it should look like. Um, if your website, um, uh, sorry, your Google Analytics still looks like this, which is GA3 or UA3, um, you'll see uh, a, a more, let's call it older view. Um, and if you don't have it configured correctly, you'll see the cart to detail rate and the buy to detail rate under the shopping behavior tab. 
with lots of zeros in it. So this this isn't um, uh, configured correctly. Uh, and so if you've got lots of zero percents everywhere, then this probably needs to be fixed and updated so that the information is correct. Um, there's another section in um, UA3 called uh, checkout behavior. So it's under conversions, e-commerce, and then checkout behavior. If yours looks like this, where it says step uh, one, zero, and, and step two sessions with transaction zero, that means that Google Analytics isn't currently configured to pick up information from your checkout. And so um, you need to get that fixed in order for the data to exist. Um, here's another one that um, uh, does have some basic information, but it doesn't include the, the cart drop-offs. It only includes the revenue and the conversion rate. And so the information for how many people uh, actually checked out and um, converted um, is really, really only in the first first example. And this is this is really powerful because it lists it per product, shows you the items viewed, shows you the items added to cart, the items purchased, and then revenue from each. So, uh, if you need a bit of help help with getting that set up, let us know. Um, but otherwise, just check your own Google Analytics and see see what information you have. Yeah, just looking at those at those ratios of. 4,700 4, items were added or instances where items were added to the cart and uh, 1,100 or 1,100 were purchased. And so uh, without doing the math, that's roughly a quarter of those people who, who added items to the cart ended up buying and three quarters of them didn't, right? And so it's important to understand that the industry average across the world in e-commerce sites is 68%. 68% of people who do not, uh, who, people who added um, added items to their cart did not complete the transaction. So, uh, so 75% is slightly less than average. 68% is is average. Um, this doesn't mean that you have to put up with six. Means if you're in that kind of ratio, then it's not unusual. And so, the, so you, uh, the smart businesses do whatever they can to make sure that they are working, understand the numbers, and then look to make whatever improvements they can to their site and their processes and their products and, and th the whole way that they deliver and fulfill to reduce that abandonment rate. It makes such a difference to reduce the abandonment rate because you've got these visitors coming into your website anyway. The more that you can end up converting them, it just goes straight to the bottom line. Yeah, uh, just agreed. <laughs> yeah, um, I'll just end my sharing now. So that's really it. We had a, a, there's a, a quick, quick whip through of um, um, how to uh, how to reduce shopping cart abandonment. As I say, there's the guide article that we've just released uh, on on the concise website. Um, this this webinar was is really meant to kind of give you an overview and to give you some tips if you've got any questions. Please don't hesitate to give us a call or send either Gareth or myself an email. We're happy to help in any way if we can. And uh, if you know anyone who needs help, please let us know. Uh, please let them know about this stuff as well. Okay, so that's it from me. Gareth, anything you want to say to wrap up? No, just thank you for attending. And I've just linked the uh, article in the chat there if anyone wants to click on it. Um, otherwise, I'm sure we can send it to you. Thanks very much for coming, everybody. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Thank you. Cheers.